Did you know that you can't eat gold? I've heard this one quite a bit from people that are against investing in gold or precious metals and things, and they say, well, it's not going to be any good if things fall apart because you can't eat gold. Um, well, that is partly true. You cannot eat gold. Uh, but the fact of the matter is it shows ignorance on the part of a lot of people out there. They'll say, well, gold is a bad investment because, look, we can prove here it went down a little bit. We'll talk about that, why that happens here in a little a couple of few minutes. But they'll say, um, and also if things get really bad, what good is a whole bunch of gold someplace and whatever, you can't eat it. It's not going to be any good. You can't you know, go to the store and buy, can't walk in with an ounce of gold and say, I'd like to buy my groceries with this ounce of gold. And so therefore, forget gold investment. Well, that doesn't exactly line up with scripture. And I'm going to get into that here as we continue. Um, point number one that I want to make, that's very important to understand and that is that gold is not an investment. If you're going to buy gold to make money, to get rich, uh, that's not a good idea. Gold is wealth preservation. All right? You don't buy this and then watch every day to see if the value of it went up or down. All right? It takes a longer time for, it doesn't really go up in value, to be honest with you. It's just that this right here goes down in value. The American dollar goes down in value. And this appears to be worth more as a result of that. Danielle, one of the things that has made me successful is being objective. And I try to shoot holes in my argument. To me, gold okay. is not an investment. And I've been very clear on that my whole YouTube career. To me, gold is wealth, period. I've accumulated it every two weeks for 33 years. I've never missed a two-week period. That was the promise I made to my father when he and I started this company 30 plus years ago. It's wealth to me. I've never sold it based upon fear and the sky is falling. But for the first time in my life, I'm very scared about the world my children are growing up in. And I, I think when you look at gold, it has lived through two world wars, German hyperinflation, the Great Depression, every pandemic and anything the world has ever thrown at it. Gold has had thousands of years, 6,000 approximately years of history, proving that it's worth something. It's all throughout the scriptures. We'll talk about that here in a few minutes too. But this argument that gold um, is not any good. If you get gold and whatever else, um, it's going to be bad and you'll, you'll lose money probably and whatever. And you can't convert it into, you can't go to the grocery store and buy things with it. I'm going to talk about that and, and the folly of that way of thinking here. But um, you say you can't go to the store and buy anything with this. Well, let me ask you a question. I'm here in America. Can I buy something with this? Well, right now, yes, because it still has worth to it. But what about this? What about that? Can I buy something with this at the grocery store? Most stores, no. What has to happen? I have to take this someplace and convert it to something like this. What's the conversion rate between this and this? Well, that varies. It depends. So wait a second. If I get this, I have to go to my bank and they convert it to that. That's reasonable. That's understandable. But yet if I say I want to convert this into a lot of these, now that's unreasonable. And there are investment you know, professionals and things that will say this, you shouldn't invest in something like this because it's too hard to convert to this. You can go to a coin shop. Go to the bank to convert this to this, go to a coin shop to convert this into that. All right, it really doesn't make any sense. But let me just say it this way. What should you invest your money in? Well, you should invest your money into, you know, treasury bonds and real estate and stocks and, and uh, 401k retirement accounts and money market accounts and all those other things like that. Can you buy things at the grocery store with those? Well, you have to take some out. Yeah, you have to convert this here, gold, into physical cash or into putting it into your bank and then just buying something with your debit card or whatever else. You see the point I'm trying to make? So watch out for the liars out there, men like Dave Ramsey and people like that, that say gold is a terrible investment. Well, I would agree it's not an investment. It's wealth preservation, right? And But see, here's the whole thing. This, I can put someplace. 
you can take a gold coin and you can stick it in the ground or you can hide it someplace and whatever else so that you're uh, what the FDIC calls unbanked. But you see, they want you to get money like this that they can control. They can print more of it. You can't just make this out of thin air. You see? So this represents real wealth and it has for thousands of years. This type of a thing has come and gone. This is new currency here. This is a new Federal Reserve note. See the color, different color scheme on it? This isn't what they used to look like. When I was a boy, there wasn't anything like this. I remember when they came out with this. See? And someday, this isn't going to be worth $20. This will always be worth something. All right? But let's go to the Bible now. And I'm going to show you an interesting thing here. King James Bible. Um, if you go to a like sword searcher or some other type of a thing where you can do keyword searches with the King James Bible, type in rich in gold. R-I-C-H-I-N G-O-L-D. Rich in gold. And the interesting thing is you'll come up with two references in scripture. One in Genesis, one in Revelation. From the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible, gold is mentioned throughout. So, rich in gold shows up twice. Let's look at those references. Genesis chapter 13, verse 2 is the first one. Genesis chapter 13 and verse 2 says, And Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Huh. Um, could you just... Is cattle cash? Livestock, is that cash? No. But you know what? You can go and you can slaughter that cattle. And uh, you can go and you can turn it into this if you want that. But Abram didn't just have whatever money and they had back then. It was gold and silver. I realized that they were too smart to have paper currency. But that's not all that he had, you see. And again, think about this. Always remember this. This shouldn't be the only type of wealth that you have. You should have other wealth as well. And, you know, I'm just speaking on a secular basis here. Uh, you need to be saved. You need to be born again. That's the most important thing. Have a right relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. But what I'm saying is you should have things like food and raiment, good clothing, good food, stay in good health, good nutrition. That stuff is worth more than money in the bank. And a lot of people that go out there and break their neck to get into the stock market and all the other things, um, they're actually destroying their health. They're not in very good health. They're not very wealthy in terms of what the Bible teaches. But you see it there in Genesis chapter 13, rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. So it's more than just gold. There's also silver as a precious metal, which is a lot more affordable to most people. Um, but let's go back to Revelation, the last reference to rich in gold. And here you'll see something very interesting in relation to our modern time. This is actually a prophecy for today. Revelation chapter 3, verse 15 through 18. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. Um, God is speaking to the last group of Christians that are there before the end times really gets going. The events of Revelation start to really, you know, take place. He's speaking to the last group of people that's on the earth. Verse 16. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. God doesn't like wishy-washy Christians. He doesn't like people that are politically correct and I'm worried about offending people and whatever else. That's not what God wants. But look at verse 17 and 18. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. What happens to this when all of a sudden no stores recognize this anymore? When the dollar defaults eventually, what happens to it? It's gone. Verse 18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich. Rich in gold. There you have the three different words. Not in direct succession there, but rich. Buy of me gold. All right. And white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. 
You say, but it's speaking spiritually. It's speaking about righteousness, God's righteousness. That's likened to gold. That's absolutely correct. But why would God liken his righteousness to gold if gold is not worth anything? If gold is just a, a yellow rock or something, just it's not really worth much of anything. Uh, no, there's, there's value to that. All right. Um, so there's a lot of people that are thinking that they have everything all set. They, they're worth a lot of this uh, funny money here, and yet they don't believe in this here. Uh, well, God's word defends this over and over again. And, of course, if you're heaping it together for the last days, the Bible warns about that in the book of James. You have to be careful. But um, with the volatility and everything of all that's going on with the economy, I would recommend being unbanked. All right. Make sure that you have money outside of the bank, not just precious metals. I wouldn't have a lot of, you know, some of this, some cash around, but you want to be very careful stocking up with a lot of this because it's continually losing value. This is continually, gradually going up. But you see the reason that you'll see this look like it's losing value is because there's marketing or they're, they're scheming with this over here. They're printing more of it or they're they're contracting with it. They're not lending it out as much or they'll, they'll you know, give it out a lot more stimulus checks and things. That messes with the value of gold, you see? So it's not that gold's a bad, a bad uh, thing to have. I almost said investment. Um, no, gold is a good thing to have, but don't look and say, well, I have to see you know, its relation to the dollar. Well, the dollar is going to crash. This won't, all right? But your hope should never be in lots of this. Your hope should be in a right relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, so I just wanted to put that out there because there's a lot of false information out there trying to say that gold is not worth anything. Uh, there's a reason they're saying that because the scam that they're part of, people that have gold are going to survive it. And uh, we must never let any corrupt government come along and confiscate precious metals as they did back 100 years ago, 1933. Um, we cannot allow that to happen again. And uh, don't ever give it in if they decide to. It's a corrupt scam. Learn from the lessons of history. People that gave in their gold, they were given money that uh, was devalued over the next number of years. And so they actually lost money. The government stole from them. So um, that is going to be it. Please do take these things to heart. Please think about them. Please pray about it. I realize a lot of people would say, I don't have the money to buy gold and whatever else. Uh, I get that. Um, you can buy silver. Silver is fairly cheap. There's other things that you can do. I'm talking about saving money. Um, something to think about. See you in the next video.